Come on, man. Do you want a Leagues of Votan kill team that looks like Moon Baby? Moon Baby. Well, let's do it then! Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Wayne. In this video, we're taking inspiration from somewhere a little bit different. Now, my little lad is obsessed with Moon Baby, a character from a kids' TV show, The Moon and Me. We watch it together every evening and well, it got me thinking, what about a kill team inspired by that adorable little fella's colour scheme? Let's dive in and we can see how we can bring Moon Baby's world to the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. I've liked the idea of tackling some of the newer squat minis for a while now. No wait, sorry, I mean Leagues of Votan minis. We've got to get that copyrightable name in there. And the Arthkin Salvagers will really scratch that itch nicely. And it just so happens that the overall shape of them does fit really nicely with what I'm trying to get from this project. After a quick flick through the build instructions to figure out what build options I wanted, I was ready to start going. I got them built and gave them a quick prime and a zenithal highlight, concentrating on the faces first. Don't worry if you've not done that before. I've got a video linked up in the top corner and you can see exactly how to do that. So check that out after you've watched this one. Right, we're built, primed and ready to crack on, let's talk about colour. I find from my own process that I like to approach a project with a solid plan. Since Moon Baby is going to be the inspiration for this project, let's take a closer look at the colours that make up the defining aspect of his character's colourway and make him identifiable as a whole. Straight away it's the cold blues we notice, paying homage to the moon reference in his name. This is going to be the main colour theme then. I'm thinking we use the lighter colour blue for the armour plates and the darker blue for the undersuit. The other defining aspect of Moon Baby we notice is his massive glowing head. Now, that's another thing that lends itself towards the shape of the hearth again. It's a warm white we see that's really going to help give the focal point for the model. Looking at the palette, it's not very diverse tonally though, and it seems we might need to add something to the palette that would work with the overall theme. A vibrant green would work really well to complement what we've already got, to bring a little more visual interest to each of the minis. Another thing we notice is the ochre coloured gloves and boots, bringing a touch of warmth from the opposite side of the colour wheel to the scheme without compromising the overall palette. All of the other colours we're going to use are analogous. Let's look at what we have and get some colours on the palette and crack on with bringing Moon Baby into the 41st millennium. As we're getting the colours ready, now's a really good time to remind you, if you haven't already, do give me a subscribe. And if you're enjoying the content, do give me a like. Cheers guys. Back to it. As the palette's ready, so let's just crack on. First thing I'm going to do is with a very thinned down dark blue, I'm going to paint in that undersuit. And then coming in with the airbrush, we're going to use that lighter blue just to base coat all of the armor panels. Now, this is a very simple color scheme overall, so we can lay everything down quite fast. And that's why I'm going to utilize the airbrush. All of these minis are fairly easy to paint, so there's no reason why I really need to get in there with the brush and just take more time. Efficiency is key. Once we've done that, we can move on to the next stage. And we're going to get something that's close to that yellow ochre that we saw on the gloves and the boots. And we're just going to pick out a few details. Now, the models do have some quite nice detail down on the feet and the hands. And it really does help just make the colours pop a little bit. I've also decided that I'm going to use some of that yellow on the weapons. Again, just to tie the theme together. And I've come up with a little bit of brown colour on the belts, again, just to add a little bit more variation to the theme. At this point, we're 90% there. What I'm going to do now is hit the entire model with an all-over brown wash, just to bring everything together. Let it dry for about 30 minutes, and then I'm going to come back in with a Q-tip, moistened with a little bit of mineral spirits, and just start to remove some of that brown wash. And it's just going to give that grimy, weathered, 41st millennium grim dark vibe to it and really define some of those armor lines without us putting too much effort in and we're on to the details then so i'm going to come in with some ivory paint and just 
give a little bit more definition to where we want some potential glowing elements to be. And we're going to hit this with the green that we talked about earlier. It's going to be complementary to the other colors, but it really is going to help. Also, we're going to think about what we're going to do with the bases. And again, I think I'm going to go for a glowing effect here. Now, we talked about using a green for that spot color. Um, that's what we're going to do but for the bases i want to go to the opposite side of the color wheel and we're going to use red that's going to give us a really high contrast to the mini make it stand out and just bring a little bit more visual interest into what would otherwise be quite a cool looking model all those blues really do bring the temperature down so that little touch of ochre and then this spot of red is going to balance out that color temperature just a little bit better than having something a little bit more blended into the base now I do really like this, what I've used is a magenta ink through the airbrush and I'm just coming back in reinforcing the hotter parts with a little bit of white and then I'll hit again with another layer of that ink and that's going to give us a really nice simple subtle effect. Right, let's tackle that green then. Now I'm using x rith Flame here through the airbrush and it's going to be a very simple OSL effect, I'm not going to go OTT with it, but by having the darker colour that was introduced by the wash step earlier it's really going to make that green pop and I'm going to use exactly the same technique of coming back in hitting it with white and doing it multiple times. Now the last thing that we've got to do then is a little bit of panel lining on the helmet just to give some interest to the face the focal point there and that is pretty much going to be it. Last thing we've got to do is to rim the base I'm quite a fan of going just in black all around the base and then I'll introduce a vignette as well around the edges of the base and that really brings the user into the center of the model and with that we're done. Let's take a look. Look at these. Do you like them? Yeah. Wow. Which is your favorite? You show me, point it. <gasps> that one. Is it that one there? <gasps> wow. Thanks, Hubs. What did you think? Did it turn out all right? Let us know down in the comments. Are you gonna say bye? Bye bye. <laughs>